I want to talk about some of the announcements you're making, particularly within security Intel. What are you hoping to achieve with that? Yes, you know, security is absolutely top of mind for pretty much all of our customers, CEOs, CIOs, boards of directors. Security Intel and the announcements we've made are all about leveraging the network infrastructure to obtain data and information and insights that can allow us to improve the security posture overall in any enterprise setting. I mean, the one thing that every malware security, cybersecurity attack has in common is that it needs to traverse a network to do its dirty work, and we can leverage that as a tool to prevent the bad guys from doing the harm that they typically do. So last month when you came out with your earnings, you cut your fourth quarter revenue guidance. What was driving that? Yeah, we actually had a great Q3 in that we saw significant growth in our enterprise business at 8% year over year. We saw good growth in cloud at 6% year over year. Uh, security was over 22% year over year, so we're really proud of that. Um, in the telco space, the telco is a challenging market overall for ourselves and for our peers. So we're being a little bit cautious going into the Q4 timeframe, particularly for that reason. Um, so we did guide to year over year growth modest year of year growth, but we are a bit cautious primarily because of the dynamics in the telco space. And one of your peers, Cisco, came out with earnings today. They're citing a slowing global economy. They're citing uh, perhaps a little bit of a slowdown in enterprise IT spending. How do you view that enterprise IT spend? Yeah, we saw a little bit of weakness in terms of some of the orders uh, near the end of the Q3 quarter for us, primarily because some of this, there is a little bit of a, let's say, more caution in how CIOs and CTOs are making decisions about their IT infrastructure investments. Uh, that being said, you know, we're a relatively smaller player in the enterprise segment. We have plenty of room to grow. And honestly, I've never felt better about the technology offerings that we have in the market today and I believe that even in the face of some softening in the macro environment we can do very well going forward and with the missed acquisition when can we see that pull in demand to the rest of your enterprise product portfolio yeah, like you said, I'm in, actually in our customer and partner event here in Las Vegas. The excitement level from our customers and our partners about the MIST technology honestly is off the charts. If you think about an, a, an analogy of self-driving car, just like there is this need for a self-driving car in the market today, there is also a need and a drive towards a network that drives itself, that runs itself, that provides a really superior end user experience. And MIST brings all of that to bear into the enterprise market through its AI technology. And we're taking that technology and applying it across our entire enterprise portfolio in the company. Tremendous excitement. We're seeing great momentum. I think it'll start to meaningfully add to our revenue uh, in, in next year in 2020. It wouldn't be a technology show if we didn't mention both AI and then, of course, 5G. You talked about pulling AI into your revenue stream next year. What about 5G? Mm -hmm. 5G is going to be very big. It's obviously very important for our telco customers and therefore important for us. Telcos represent you know, over 40% of our business. I think 5G is probably the most important catalyst for increased investment by our telco customers over the next two to three years. It won't happen overnight. It'll happen over a, you know, a two to three year period. For us, that means more of our routing and our switching infrastructure to carry the tremendous amount of traffic that 5G will create in the network. It means security to ensure that, you know, that customers can use the IT infrastructure, their cloud services safely without having to worry about the compromise of data and um, you know, information. So I do think it is going to be a really important trend for us. It's just going to take a period of time before we can fully benefit from it. You do have a goal of returning about 50% of your free cash flow back to shareholders. Why are there no other opportunities to invest internally? 
Well, fortunately, even with that goal of 50% of free cash flow returned through dividends and buybacks, we have a very healthy balance sheet that we can leverage for making acquisitions, similar value-creating acquisitions such as the one we just did in, uh, with MIST. So I'm actually quite comfortable that we've balanced capital returns as well as the cash that we would need to run the business and to make other inorganic moves.